Today I'm very excited because I'm finally going to sit down and read the comics. The first I'm going to read is The Promise. I had no idea what to expect. I don't know anything about the comics other than I should read them. <laughs> oh, I like how they did the, the intro. Water, earth, fire, air. But from the first day I met him, I believed Aang would save the world. And you know what? I was right. Nice. It's nice that they actually give closure to the intro like that. <laughs> there, Aang and I figured out what we meant to each other. Yeah, I bet you did. Haven't you ever heard of knocking Sokka? They're outdoors. It actually makes me really happy. It brings me some comfort that they're still adventuring. Like, to feel like it's not over is nice. One of the hardest things about the show is when it ends, you know, the pain that you get from knowing that there's no more. So just having like this little extra taste, it goes a long way. If you ever see me turning into my father, I want you to end me. Like got dark fast. Even now, after everything that's happened, my family legacy is still a part of me. But that comes with a lot of pressure. And if I'm honest with myself, I need a safety net. Hmm. I think there is something to that though, right? Like we saw that Sozin became corrupted through his position and we didn't really see any obvious reason why. So I think the implication is that there's something intrinsic to being the Fire Lord that corrupts and maybe it's the pressure. Although my instinct for Zuko is that he's somewhat protected from it precisely because he had that outside experience. Like he left the kingdom and he saw all, he saw the whole world. He saw both sides. His journey really made him understand why that's wrong. So my feeling in the show is that that wasn't really a big threat for him. Although I guess that's kind of where the comic is going. But there's no way Anka kills Zuko, right? Like he couldn't even kill Ozai, who's not his friend. Down with the traitor. Why can't you colonials get it through your thick skulls? The Harmony Restoration Movement is a means to peace. With all due respect, your majesty, my family has lived on this land for generations. We have as much right to be here as anyone else. So this is great. I think one of the best things about the show for me is that they, they focus so heavily on the individual experience. In the show, things got wrapped up kind of neatly. The Fire Lord was defeated. Theoretically, the nations can go back to doing what they want, but it's never that simple, right? In real life, there are some people who probably liked the old order, both among the Fire Nation citizens and also among the colonized citizens. I mean, that's just how things go. Just because the Fire Nation was tyrannical and evil doesn't mean that everyone hated them necessarily. It's complicated. This is a pretty cool plot point to take, I think. Oh, so we get a little epilogue on Zuko visiting his father. You think being Fire Lord is easy? It comes with many pressures and those pressures will change you. Hmm. So Ozai is not completely out of the picture yet. Meanwhile, my team and I have helped dozens of Fire Nation colonies move back to your homeland. They all loved coming back. Check it out, this is a Fire Nation dance from over a hundred years ago. <laughs> Aang is just uniting the four nations through dance. Dance bending? Is that what he's doing? I love this woman's face. This guy loves dancing for sure. Fire Lord Zuko has withdrawn support of the Harmony Restoration Movement. In the show, we focus so heavily on balance between the four nations, right? But there was nothing in there about them having to be separate. Like right now, they're taking all the people from the Fire Nation and moving them out of the Earth Kingdom. That seems a little bit beyond the scope of the Avatar's duty. The Harmony Restoration Movement seems like one of those things where it sounds good on paper, it's like end the colonies, but you're not taking into account all the consequences, the disruption you'll cause, you know? It's hard. I don't think there are any easy answers for, this, for something this complicated. You've done your duty, the war's over, the world is not at peace. I mean, it'll never be fully at peace though, right? I feel like that's that's an impossible task for Aang. Actually, come to think of it, that seems like a weird risk for being the Avatar. Like, if you go too far, you become a tyrant yourself. This is one of those classic things, right? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. A lot of the worst atrocities come from thinking that you could fix everything, that you could eliminate the problems of the world. If Aang really wants to make the world totally at peace, that means he's gonna have to kill people or imprison people who don't agree with his vision of peace, which is not not that much different from Ozai. I think part of being a wise leader, maybe part of just being wise in general, is accepting that some things are out of your control and that pain and suffering is just a natural part of life. And even assuming you could take pain away, which you probably can't, you might be doing people an injustice by doing so because it's just part of life's experience that you have to cope with. It seems like what Roku's asking Aang to do is impossible. The more I think about him, the more I think that he's not very wise. Yeah, I didn't even kill Ozai and he was evil all the way through. How am I supposed to kill my teacher and friend? That's That makes sense. A person who keeps his promises. Roku has some really weird... <laughs> he just has some, like a really weird way of looking at things. I don't know. Like, what good is it if that's the world you live in where you, you gotta kill your friend to try to achieve total peace, which is impossible? I don't know. When you're in a position of power, you must put the needs of the world above your own. I don't totally disagree with this, but I think the problem is you know your own needs so much better. You don't know the needs of the world. I don't think the aim of the Avatar should be to be, like, Grand Emperor, it's just to keep balance and make sure one side doesn't get too strong. You don't want to become the strong, overbearing protector yourself. Oh, look who it is. Isn't that Smeller Bee? Um, that's not how I would, would have phrased it. I would have phrased it as, isn't that long shot? <laughs> you ready, sweetie? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, sweetie. Not gonna lie, it still feels a little weird. And grew though, look at him, he's huge. Yeah, yeah, see? Exactly. 
It is Ugi. I agree, Saka. Fucking <laughs> odd, man. You think after all this time he would like figured it out? Come on, you goons. You can't can't touch Aang. Don't play yourself. You think you can defeat the Avatar? You fire goons. Come on. Oh, look who it is. And the Fire Lord. I have to protect the citizens of the Fire Nation. He's not wrong, but this is all kind of a big misunderstanding. Wow, so they're fighting. That's not good, I don't want that. I came here to talk to you, Zuko, as a friend, but you've changed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get too hasty here. You haven't talked to him at all. Yo, chill. You're like escalating this like crazy. Come on. Come on now, Aang. I don't know how they're gonna resolve this. I don't see any like simple way to do it. Oh wow, so the Fire Nation mayor's daughter is an earthbender, but she's loyal to the Fire Nation. That's complicated. <laughs> She'd be a great person to like include in this project since she knows both worlds. Maybe turn the solution over to the local people, let them figure it out. Okay, here it is, so he's actually saying it. Harmony requires four separate nations to balance each other out. You can't have balance if one nation occupies another. Why does it have to be an occupation though? I think Aang is mixing things up a little bit. Like one is occupation, one is residence. Like they're forcibly evicting Fire Nation people from their nation. That doesn't seem right. But Fire Nation control seems wrong, but they're not the same thing. Aang is saying that peace would be impossible if they're allowed to mix, but I feel like that gives people too little credit. I definitely agree with Katari here. She's trying to like, at least make the Earth Nation make their own decisions. I mean, that makes sense. This is so political, I, like, I don't know what to make of it. It's complicated tough, yeah, I'll say. May, nice. They're still not married? Come on, it's been a year. <laughs> what are you doing? It's not like you're waiting to meet someone better. Like there's, you have the whole kingdom at your disposal. You've been having trouble sleeping. How did you know? <laughs> Come on. Come on now. Oh, nice. Cool, so we get the Kyoshi warriors guarding Zuko, including Tai Lee. Is that Tai Lee? That's her, right? Does that mean uh, Suki also is guarding Zuko? <laughs> That's weird. Why are they keeping Zuko's romantic options open? The show is over, but the shipping continues. Oh, so Top ended up as an earthbending teacher. That's perfect. That's actually a really good fit, I think. I see Top has perfected the art of earth flying. So how'd you come up with the idea of starting your own school? After training Aang, I realized how fulfilling teaching can be. Top, I think, is a great teacher, actually. She's confident in her ability, so she's not the type to get jealous. She's a master of her craft, and she's not gonna bullshit you. Like, she's gonna tell you exactly what you need to do to improve. She seems like a tough teacher, but she'd be a great teacher for sure. By the way, speaking of Osaka, I saw the movie. So these Fire Nation people took over Top's school. That's a... that was a mistake. Who dare disturb Master Kunio's firebending dojo? Get the hell out of here. Everyone knows metal bending doesn't exist. You're about to get metal bended, dude. Yeah. Oh, she doesn't need to touch it anymore. Someone told me she needs to touch metal to bend it, but that's clearly not the case. That's cool, so in the middle of all this political controversy, we get a nice little mini episode with Toph. Oh my gosh, it's like me who should be sorry? I'm Heiwan, co-president and co-founder of the official Avatar Aang fan club. Oh! <laughs> Uh-oh. Jealousy, Katara jealousy incoming. What an honor it is to meet Avatar Aang's first girlfriend. Why, thank you, I, wait, what do you mean first? <laughs> I like this girl already. Oh, it'd be so amazing if you stayed at our clubhouse. No, 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 no. Most of our club members are girls. <laughs> look at Katara, look at Katara's face, this is great. Oh my God, yep. The show is over, but my love of their interpersonal drama, still going strong. You said this is a model after the Western Air Temple. <laughs> See, Aang's smart. See, he didn't criticize it. He saw it for what it was, which is them actually really liking him. Do you remember those family vacations we used to take on Ember Island? Wow, Ozai saying that. That's interesting. Funny how after the show, I'm starting to get like human humanizing things from Ozai. We saw a hawk attacking a turtle crab by the water. Never mind. Even then you possessed an odd affinity for the weak. It's because he was the weak one. But then when you had the turtle crab safely in your arms, you hesitated and you realized you were condemning the hawk to starve. <laughs> Before you could reach a decision, a wave washed over you and carried you out into the ocean. Well, so much for that. I dove in to save you. Spent the rest of the day in your mother's arms vomiting seawater. Wow, that's kind of touching. Extra touching thinking of the Fire Lord jumping into the ocean. Zuko's actually getting to know his dad here a little bit, which is kind of what he wanted in the first place. It's very strange. Back to Toph's training. How I miss you, Space Sword. Oh, he never got it back? I thought he would find it later. <laughs> that's good. Hey, Saka, am I doing this right? I'm trying to roll my eyes at you. <laughs> Look at Aang and the group of girls, I love it. And Momo's got his own little fan club. I, like, admittedly, this is pushing it a little bit. Like, I do feel for Katara here. I don't think she's out of line being jealous. Like, literally, Hank's like in a circle of girls <laughs> who are calling him dreamy. It's like a little much. And I think what what is kind of annoying about it is that he's he's oblivious to it. He's not considering her feelings. I think that's probably where actually Aang is going wrong here. You gotta consider your girlfriend's feelings here, dude. Come on. Uh-oh, here comes the... 
fight. <laughs> well, you certainly seem to enjoy those girls' attention. Thanks for agreeing to stay there for the night, sweetie. It meant the world to me. Oh, don't thank me, Ang. I don't deserve it. Yeah, she's being, she's being too hard on herself. She handled that super well. Like, it's totally natural to feel jealous in that situation. She didn't explode. She didn't get super angry. She let Ang have his fun. If anything, I think Ang should be apologizing. Well, I'm loving this, like, Zuko bad tea time. At the beach, I was overwhelmed by my circumstances because I couldn't decide whose side to take. Who you choose to defend deserves to be defended simply because you chose them. What you choose by definition is right. Hmm. Divine will. Divine choice. It's a very interesting metaphor, the hawk and the, the turtle crab and the wave. There's no simple solution, so I think the best answer is probably just to leave it alone. And in a weird way, I'm, maybe I'm reading, this is me reading my own thing into it, but the wave symbolizes like, if you meddle in things outside of your control, you end up just getting annihilated. You don't have a role in this. And as for Ozai, you'd choose what is right because you're the Fire Lord. There are some elements of that that I agree with. I think that if you work really hard on your principles, and you have you come to a worldview that you have arrived at through really careful and difficult deliberation and experience. I think that operating by those principles is probably what is going to be most right for you. I think that the danger is assuming that you know what works for others. So like for a ruler, I think your actions aren't right by default, but you can choose the principles that you, you live by. That's a different thing. And so Zuko, I think he needs to define his principles. I think that's why he's having so much trouble. He doesn't know what he stands for. He's torn between his nation and also just humanity. You know, he's lived in the world. He's traveled with different vendors, but he has duty to the Fire Nation and the Fire Nation people. And so he just needs to work out, you know, his role. I think that's what's, what's troubling him. The Avatar is an irrelevant relic of a bygone age. He wants to keep the world frozen in time by denying the inevitable victory of the strong over the weak. This is great. I love that Ozai gets a voice in the comics. This is so awesome. And I'm glad to see this substantiated in a way because it's something I've been thinking about. It does seem like there are some implications in the show that the Avatar system is outdated and, and doesn't give the world what it actually needs, which is why the world is in crisis. It seems like the Avatar system has kind of run its course, especially factoring in energy bending, right? It seems like there used to be a better, more meta way of dealing with things at, at a more um, fundamental level, but then they became kind of compartmentalized into elements and nations and avatars having to like kill to protect it. It, it seems like it seems lesser. You sick of me, Zuko, leave my presence. Interesting that <laughs> Ozai is banishing Zuko, even though Ozai is the one in prison. Certain people in your life once they have a hold over you, they'll probably always have that hold over you. It's hard to break those chains. Just call me the greatest earthbender of all time. Okay. No, seriously, I want you to call me that. <laughs> Aw, he actually does it. That's cute. Aw, makes me happy. You have to choose, Corey. Are you Earth Kingdom or are you Fire Nation? I'm an earthbender and a Fire Nation citizen, and I live in Udal. That's what I choose. Yeah. Good job, Corey. I don't know you very well, but I like you. You are what you are. People want to put you in a box, you know? You can be multiple things. You can be a complex individual. It's all right. Don't let Aang or Zuko, for that matter, tell you otherwise. How did this guy become king again? <laughs> like, didn't we learn from the first time? No? Okay. All my life I've been weak. It's time to be a man. Uh-oh. I will order General how to lead my troops to Yudao and enforce harmony. Oh, no. Yeah. So this guy's going to start a war just to prove that he's not weak, which is like the weakest thing ever. When I brought them to the school, I expected them to become metal benders. I expected them to be something they're not. How is what I'm doing to them different from what my parents did to me? No! Toph, don't bend the knee. Never! Where's your inner strength, your pride? This is not the Toph I know. Oh, he metal bended her. <laughs> to stand up. Nice. Yeah, see? I talked about like bullets, right? And people were like, no, you, you have to touch metal. This is literally what they're doing right now. They're shooting metal bullets, kind of. I think what we've learned is I'm always right. I am the best reactor in the world. Don't you forget it. Oh, wow. Lately, I've realized you love your secrets more. You'll have an easier time keeping them when you're alone. Goodbye, Fire Lord. So I guess they are keeping Suko's love interests open. Oh, look at Suki moving in. What the heck? Are we having a love triangle between Sokka, Zuko, and Suki? Hmm. I think both Zuko and Aang need to stop listening to the their ancestors. They need to just do their own thing. That's an important thing of what they learned. But that's, the, you know, that's how it is in real life. Like, we constantly learn lessons in our lives, but sadly, learning them is not enough. Sometimes you have to learn the same things again and again and again in order to really start living them. I really think that the lesson for Aang and Zuko is to start shedding these these voices and just to listen to themselves, trust their own instincts. Yeah, like Rook was trying to get Aang to kill Zuko. It's ridiculous. Get out of here. Wow. So Aang is getting pissed because they tattooed the airbending tattoo on their foreheads and he says they didn't earn it. 
So this is the opposite of what I was talking about before, about how he appreciated the gesture. He saw what, for what it really was. Here he's getting a little bit lost in it. These people just don't know. They're not trying to insult him. He wants to preserve his culture, but as Katara correctly points out, it's just him now. So there's not a whole lot he can preserve without sharing it. Change is something that's out of your control. And the more you resist it, the more you tell yourself that you need to preserve it exactly as it is, the more pain you feel about it. Like I have conversations with people close to me about how language is changing. And that seems like an endless amount of frustration to some people. But for me, it's like, since there's nothing you can do about it, you may as well not spend time agonizing about it. I don't know. What happened to Aang's culture was tragic, but there's nothing he's going to do to help it by lashing out at people for doing it incorrectly, especially when those people really mean well, like they're really trying to honor it. They just don't know any better. I saw Corey and her family standing in the street, staring at us like we held their whole lives in our hand. But I didn't just see them. I also saw, we're going to have to talk about this later. Oh no. Listen to her. Katara has figured it out. Uh, the burden of being the idea guy. I miss you, Sokka. Especially after seeing that horrible f***ing movie. Suzuki wants to get to Zuko. Top says, what, you think some polite conversation can convince him not to turn evil? I don't know, he just seems so lonely. Uh-oh. Listen, Smellerby, maybe you've been thinking about this all wrong. What if you doubt it's neither Fire Nation nor Earth Kingdom? Yes. Exactly. Come on, guys. Come to your senses already. Listen to Katara and Cory and I forget this guy's name. I'm sorry. Dang, I never finished explaining to you on our first visit to Udal when I saw Cory's family. I also saw our future. That's right, because he is air and she is water, and so their baby will be one of both, but they have to live together. Hmm. You know what? Let's just stop talking to Roku. I feel like he has nothing good to add. <laughs> the Avatar must hold the world above his own nation, his own friends, even his own family. I, like, he just doesn't help. I don't know. I just, I feel like he makes things worse. Oh, there he is in his Avatar ball. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Come to your senses, Aang. You're not just fighting a colony, you're fighting a whole new kind of world. That's right. I'm not like you, Roku. Yeah, tell him, Aang. But to ask me to end your own great-grandson, for the sake of the world, when you told me to contemplate the world, what did you expect me to picture in my mind? A map? Some floaty cosmic energy? That's right! That's what I've been saying this whole time. I'm so happy to see this. You know what I actually did see? Katara, Sokka, and Top. I saw the warriors, the lotus, the monks. Zuko. I don't know how to contemplate the world without first thinking of the people I care about, including Zuko. Yes! Wow, I feel so vindicated by this because this is some of the stuff I've been talking about for the whole show. It's a new world. There's no getting around risk. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I have to figure this out on my own. Yeah, get out of here, Roku. <laughs> that's a big move from Aang. But honestly, I'm glad. I think it was long overdue. Asking you to end me if I went bad, that was like asking you to figure out right and wrong for me. The struggle isn't something a Fire Lord can escape. I'm sorry, Aang. Yeah, that's true. And I think that's true of everyone, too. People can't see the Avatar as a solution to all their problems. Even in the battle we saw earlier, everyone's like looking to the Avatar to kill the other side. That's not how things work. That's not balance. Balance and justice doesn't mean destroying the people who are on the other side from you. See, it's funny. Aang's saying he's a flawed Avatar here because he didn't let Zuko die. And that's right, he is a flood avatar, but that means he's somehow a less flood person. He'll never be able to let family die, but that's not something that's wrong. There's no way that's wrong. <laughs> At least we get one funny arrow line. Sometimes dreams are the way a person's spirit reveals the answer to his own problems. But then again, sometimes they are just the result of eating spicy food before going to bed. That does happen. I have to admit, I'm a little nervous about this. I love my people's culture, and I don't want to see it corrupted. At the same time, it can't just belong to history. Air Nomad culture has to belong to the future, too. That's great, so Aang's teaching them the ways of the Air Nomads. You are the only person in the world who can coax the information I need out of that. <gasps> Is it Azula? Uh-oh. What do you want in return for helping me find my mother? Don't be silly, Zuzu. The satisfaction of serving the Fire Lord in some small way will be compensation enough. She looks insane. Holy crap. What exactly happened to our dear mother? <gasps> Wow, so the next one is The Surge. That's so cool. I love that. I like that a lot more than I thought I would. Best part about it by far is just the simple fact of getting to be on the journey again. I miss them. I miss watching the show. I miss their back and forth. I miss the dialogue. I miss Sokka's humor, especially after seeing that horrible movie. I take great personal satisfaction at the fact that Aang severed ties with Roku. That's so cool. I also like that once again, they're focusing on the individual story as opposed to making things just about your side or your tribe. We saw people uh, on all different sides, all different perspectives, different conflicting interests, which is how things really would be. Overall, I really enjoyed that. I didn't expect it to be so funny too, that's another thing. Please forgive me if this video was a little bit rough. This is my first time doing a comic reaction, so I, I don't really know how it's gonna go. But, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and next should be the search, I hope.